Hello, everybody! Colorful Artie's back for a brand new Let's Play. I'm sure you guys have at least heard of this game before. It's Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link, the ridiculously hard sequel to the already ridiculously hard Legend of Zelda. So this is widely renowned to be one of the toughest games out there, but don't worry. I'm hoping this Let's Play will allow anybody to be able to beat this game through my guidance and advice. And it is, it's not a bad game, like, it's probably the weakest of the Zelda games, but it's still, like, fun. Or, at least, it's fun at some parts. It also plays completely differently from every other Zelda game. And now, we get the background plot. After Ganon was destroyed, Impa told Link a sleeping spell was cast on Princess Zelda. She will awake only with the power of the number three Triforce sealed in a palace of Hyrule. To break the seal, crystals must be placed in statues in six well-guarded palaces. Link set out on his most adventurous quest yet. Also his most difficult quest to date. Hear that, Breath of the Wild? Get out. I'm just kidding, I loved Breath of the Wild. Alright, so that's the background plot. Let's get started. Oh, it didn't actually eliminate these. That's interesting. All right, so now I get to register my name. I'm also playing this on a keyboard, which will be interesting, but I'm also used to playing it on a keyboard, so hopefully I'll be at doing my best. So then you just hit select until you reach end and then start. And all right, let's begin. Free lives. So, right from the get-go, this is a side-scrolling game. The only Zelda game to be so. So, we start kinda, uh, with the sword and the shield in this game. You can hit the B button to use your sword. You can also duck to hit, uh, stab your sword downwards. And when you're at full life, you shoot sword beams. That is Zelda. It's This is kind of like a Sleeping Beauty p plot, almost, where Zelda's asleep. you got to wake her up. By getting the Triforce of Courage, actually, because at this point, Link has both the Triforce of Power and the Triforce of Wisdom from the first game. So the only piece he's actually missing is the Triforce of Courage, which is interesting. So let's get out of here. So this is the overworld map, and on this overworld map, it is a top-down kind of game like Zelda 1 was. But when you encounter, like, special enemies or different areas like this palace here, it will turn into a side-scrolling game. This orange thing that we're walking on is a path. If we walk on the path, we are safe. If we walk off the path, enemies can appear. And if we touch these enemies, we enter battle. So these are bots. These are your typical enemy. And they're actually quite annoying because they are pretty random. You also notice that we have experience in the upper right corner. Yes, you level up in this game. There are three things you can level up. Life, magic, or strength. And I will get more into those when we actually get a level up. So because we can use shoot sword beams, these guys aren't too bad. And if you can't shoot sword beams, you just have to get a bit closer. But be careful, because the bots can jump at you. And every, I think it's every five enemies you kill they'll uh, in a row, they'll drop something. This is a blue magic jar that will refill one bar of your magic meter. Anyhow. Going for the forest means that enemies will appear in much closer quarters, and if you encounter a large enemy, that means they're, they're more t difficult to defeat. So these guys are moblins. You remember them from the previous games, and those things on the ceilings, I believe, are... some kind of spider. Also, keep in mind, we do have a shield, so if we if he throws that spear at us, it can hit our shield and then just bounce off harmlessly. Anyhow, walking around, this is a town. We are going to want to go to the town very first. First thing you want to do is go to this town. Welcome to Raru. All of the towns in this are named after the sages in uh, Ocarina of Time, actually, which is pretty cool. Nice bit of foreshadowing there. There are a few that have different names, but all the sages' names are used for towns. Hello, lady. Return the crystal to the palace in Parappa. Okay. You can enter buildings by pressing up next to open doorways. Hey, dude. If all else fails, use fire. It's actually not really true. Fire has its uses, but not for everything. Hello, lady. 
Please, let me help you. Come inside. Okay. What could go wrong? I can restore your life. Not really sure how she restores my life, but yeah, if you're ever low on life, just go into that building. Hey, random villager, what's up? Sorry, I know nothing. Oh dear, she has low self-esteem. We need to fix that. And she disappeared. Only the hammer can destroy a roadblock. Thanks, dude. So, so a lot of these buildings we can't even enter. Oh hey, you just walked out of the house. How can I help you? Talk with my father before you leave town. Alright, and she'll let us into her house. Each town has a wise man. Learn from him. It's true, every town does have a wise man who you can learn a special magic spell from. Hey dude. In Parappa Desert, use this magic to survive. And we learn the magic ability Shield. If we use that, then we will get a red tunic, which will double our defense for one room. When you leave the room, or leave the battle in general, then your tunic returns to normal. And at this point in the game, I think it takes most of our magic to cast that, or maybe like two bars. Anyhow, use it sparingly at this point in the game until we uh, level up our magic. Hey, kid! Get Candle in Parappa Palace! Go west! Okay. And that's it for this town. You want to go to the towns to try to get these magic spells. However, outside of the first town, you will have to do something special to get the magic spells in later towns. Alright, where to next? Oh, this looks like a suspicious-looking forest. If you see a suspicious-looking tile, you can walk on it. And sometimes you'll go to a special area. And keys are back from the first game. They're a bit tougher to beat, though. Pretty much every enemy is tougher to beat than they were in the first game. Hey, dude. Rish. Rish. This is a pea bag. If you hit this, it will give you experience points. However, if you see a pea bag lying out like in a place like this, it, once you get it, it will disappear from the game forever until you start a new folder. So, at this point in the game, I'm actually going to grab it. And it gives us 50 uh, experience points, so now, if we want, we can level up our life, or we can hit cancel, and we will keep our experience, and we can level up something else later. So basically, if we choose to level up life now, see, it costs 50, we will level up our life, and then we'll lose 50 experience points. And if we hit cancel, we will keep all of them, which makes it easier for us to reach a level up in magic or attack. Now, I should go over what each of the level-ups do, because it's a bit confusing. Life does not increase the amount of HP bars you have, but rather will increase your defense. Likewise, leveling up magic will not give you more magic bars, but it will instead make all the magic spells you have cost less magic to use. And then attack does actually increase your attack power and lets you destroy enemies in fewer hits. At this point in the game, I'm going to level... Uh, yeah, I'll level up life. It's very, very easy to die in this game, so leveling up life early is probably a good idea. And that pea bag was apparently worth more than 50, because now we actually have 29 as opposed to just 9. It just didn't finish counting up yet. So there's another town if we go this way, but we can't do anything there just yet, so let's go on to the first palace, shall we? We're gonna have to trek through the woods in order to reach that cave. Oh, nice! The enemy spawns were nice. So at this point in the game, caves are dark, and we can't see anything. All enemies will be invisible. There's an enemy up here. If you look really closely at the floor, you can see it's changing slightly. That means there's an invisible enemy there. Bit of a jerk move, but don't worry. The caverns won't be dark for long. And now we reach the other side. These are sandy shores. Enemies here will tend to spawn different things than on uh, grass or forests. So now we have a path if we walk along. This is one of those special tiles that has a scripted event happen. We have to cross these gaps while avoiding these bubbles, because for some reason bubbles uh, hurt you. So just take it nice and easy. It's not too bad. Trust me, the game gets much harder. Oh, I'm so glad that knocked me forwards and not backwards. If it knocked me backwards, I would have instantly died. And this looks suspicious. If we go here and this way, 
It's a heart container! That actually does increase your maximum life. And these are Gariahs. You might remember them from the first game. They're the boomerang-throwing guys, but they look much different now. They're also, well, quite hard to de defeat. Unless you can do that. So heart containers are what actually gives you more bars of HP, and then there are also magic containers, which give you more bars of magic. You do not increase those by leveling up. I can't stress that enough, because I was very confused about this when I first played this game. Whoop! That was dumb. I should have kept going. I'm going to make a lot of mistakes, and I am definitely going to die in this Let's Play. I'll, I'm just throwing that out there. If you expect me to be the invincible guy who can't do any roll in this game, you're going to be sorely disappointed. I make a lot of mistakes. And this is the first palace, so let's go in. Amazing music is amazing. Welcome to the first dungeon, Parappa Palace. Yes, that is the temple music in the background from Melee, except it originated here. Huge improvement over the first uh, game's music. Okay. These are infinitely spawning enemies, and they don't actually give you any experience points if you kill them, which is a bit annoying. And they also steal your experience points if they touch you. Pretty much every infinitely spawning enemy will steal your experience points if they hit you. So don't let them hit you. Hey, bots, we're going to wait for them to jump down before killing them. Yep. Bots can just jump randomly, which makes them pretty annoying to deal with. This is a Stalfos. He's got his shield, so we can't actually stab him in the top region. He also has a sword. So he can't really da damage us as long as we keep our shield up. What we want to do is basically wait in between sword swings of his, and then crouch stab him. And he gives a pretty decent amount of experience for this point in the game. Those guys are super annoying. And that's a key. If you want to grab a key, you need to stab it with your sword. And trust me, you need a lot of keys in this game. Oh, the bots respawned. Yeah, enemies respawn very frequently in this game. So these guys basically just walk up to them, and when you get kind of close, swing your sword. Because remember, there's a bit of delay before you actually swing your sword, so the guy will be closer to you than when you actually push the button. Thankfully, when you reach the end of the screen, they will stop infinitely spawning. That's one of the few nice things the designers gave you in this game. Oh, and they can just run right through locked doors. That's fair. You will automatically unlock the door by walking into it, provided you have a key. These are bubbles! Bubbles are incredibly annoying because they can be very hard to dodge depending on how fast they are. Again, they, I believe they either drain your experience or your magic, and they also take like 90 hits to kill. I actually thought they were completely invincible for a while, but no, you can't kill them, it just takes forever and it's not worth it. So yeah, Stalfoses are really not that bad, just walk into them right before you actually touch them, just do a quick crouch stab. And then, like, you'll line it up perfectly so that way they'll stab you when they get knocked away and leaves you for an opening to walk forward and crouch stab them again. It's pretty cool. Alright, we um, we're not going to go down there just yet because we need a few keys before we do that. Alright, if we want, we can level up magic. We don't have really any useful magic spells, so I want to save up for attack. You want to level up attack as much as you can because that makes the game just so much easier. Hi, bot. Also, keep in mind, if you level up life, you will get full life. If you level up magic, you will get full magic. Okay, good. The bubble... Oh, the bubble did not re-unspawn. Okay. Also, they tend to bounce off of the borders of the screen, so it can be hard to get them off screen. This is an elevator. You saw one earlier. You can move them down or up. We're going to move this one up, because I know what's up here. I still don't know the name for these guys, because these guys didn't actually appear in Zelda 1, or like any future Zelda games. So you get a key, but you can actually keep going. And you want to keep going. Hey, bot. Hey, skeletal warrior. I don't know. I don't know his name. I probably should have looked that up before starting this LP. Alright, this... I also don't know this guy's name either. I call him Chewbacca, because he looks like a Wookiee, and he throws a lot of hammers at you. Wait for an opening before you actually move forward. And then just go to town on stabbing him. Don't get too close, though, because he can jump. 
and he can jump into you if you get too close and it's hard to dodge him. He takes a lot of hits, but he went down. So at this point, we have 150 experience. We Again, it gives us the option to level up magic, even though we've already passed that point, or level up life, which is pretty cool. Again, I'm holding out for attack, though. You have three lives. Like, you can die three times before you actually get a game over. So I'm not too worried, even if I die here. And I'm going to get game overs as well. Game overs are just, like, a, a certainty in this game. Like, even speedrunners get game overs. Also, something cool, sometimes you'll encounter weird statues like this in the palace. If you hit them with your sword, sometimes they drop cool stuff. Not all, not all of them do, though. But just something to keep in mind for the future. Alright, down we go. So I believe if we go down from here, that reach, uh, takes us to the boss layer. This is a fairy. If you jump into it, it will refill your HP. And it will disappear then until you have a game over. So again, we could go down to the boss. I don't want to go down to the boss, though. I want to backtrack a bit. Hi, hi, Bubble. Okay. Actually, Bubble does not... No, Bubble did drain my magic. Bubble doesn't take away your experience points, it just takes away your magic meter. Alright, we're gonna go down here now that we have a key or two to work with. So let's stab this statue. Nope, doesn't drop anything. That's fine. One annoying thing is that there are no health drops in this. At all. Only magic drops. You also notice that crouch stabbing occasionally makes you jump back a pixel or two. And I'm going to show you guys that bubbles really are killable. It really looks like they're not, but they are. Again, they just take a ridiculous amount of hits to kill. Yep. Oh, they give you 50 experience points. That's pretty good. Alright, we are leveling up attack. All enemies should now take one less hit to kill. Doesn't sound like much, but it helps. Yeah, those bubbles are the ones you really gotta watch out for, the really fast ones, because they're pretty much impossible to dodge. Hey, bots! When the bots are in precarious locations like that, it is best to just let them come to you. This is a bridge! Watch what happens when we walk over it. It'll collapse behind us. How fun. Peabag. You gotta crouch stab and then jump quickly in order to get that without falling into the insta-death lava. Alright, we're gonna jump over that bot. We still took a hit anyways, but that's okay. We have enough experience now. We can level up magic if we want. I'm gonna say no thank you. Again, saving up for our attack. Now this room is going to introduce us to one of the most annoying enemies in the game, Iron Knuckles. Iron Knuckle. Okay, well, first off, we have to deal with a Wookiee. So again, wait for an opening. And generally, an opening will be created if he scrolls off screen, and then you come back on screen, because it takes him like a second or two to start checking the hammers again. And you also saw there that that killed him more- I killed him more quickly because I have to level up an attack, and that red magic jar completely refills your magic meter, which is pretty cool. So at this point, because I know what's ahead of me, I'm going to use the magic spell shield. You gotta open the magic menu, select your spell, and then hit the select button. And as you can see, that took half of my magic meter because my magic is at minimal level, and I now have this sweet red tunic. This is the Iron Knuckle. Iron Knuckles, you can see he has a shield. He also has a lot of HP, and he can stab you with a sword if he wants to. Like that. And he can also move his shield whenever he darn well pleases. So, for this guy, if you can, try to lure him back here and then just keep stabbing him. Except the thing is, he can move his shield whenever he wants to, and he generally doesn't move his shield if you don't, well, if he doesn't want to. So basically, get in a position like this, and tr really try to not, really try to keep up the same height as his sword. Because survival's a little more important than actually hitting him. So yeah, as you can see, he keeps moving his shield, so he's really annoying to deal with. I can level up life, which could be really nice, but again, I really want to hold out for attack. And because we have a key, we can go back here. And we get the dungeon item, the candle. The candle lights up the dark caves for us, so we can now see all enemies that are in there. 
I guess one thing to, uh, worth noting is that, for some reason, the only enemies that actually do show up in Dark Caves are orange enemies, because just, I think, of the way the game is coded. It's supposed to show specific colored enemies in specific colored areas. Alright, so I am almost certainly going to die. Probably by these bots. I didn't die by these bots. Okay, I'm definitely dying in this room, though. Bubbles are incredibly irritating enemies. Yep. That's the first of just many, many deaths that I'm going to encounter. Seriously, who could not love the palace slash temple music? Oh no, it's gonna hit me. Oh, it didn't go up the elevator shaft, that's good. Alright, so at this point in the game, I could finish the first dungeon, but I'm actually not going to. One of the things you need to note is that when you beat a dungeon in this game, you get an instant level up. It'll basically give you enough experience to give you the uh, first level up you reach. So in this case, that would be attack, which actually would be really nice to level up attack again. But here's the thing, later on in the game, because all of your stats cap at 8, eventually it's going to cost several thousand experience points just to level one thing up. And that's a pain in the neck to grind on, so if you actually wait a bit and then do the, finish all the dungeons when you only have really expensive level ups to get, that is actually a smarter thing to do in the long run. So I'm leaving this palace, and then I'm just going to continue on with overworld shenanigans. Also, if you want, you can stab this statue. So sometimes, depending on the dungeon, stabbing that statue can do different things. It'll either do nothing, it can drop you a red magic jar, or it can turn into an iron knuckle. Stab at your own risk. So, a bot, a small enemy in the desert is actually no enemy, it's just fireballs that move across the screen. So as you can see, this cave is no longer dark blue, but rather orange, and we can now perfectly see the enemy that attacked us earlier. And I guess I should clarify, leveling up your sword doesn't necessarily guarantee you can kill enemies, all enemies in fewer hits, but it does help. Alright, a couple things we want to do now. There's a cave up here on the shores. Ooh, these are fairies. Occasionally fairy spawns will appear, and if you grab one, it'll give you a fairy that it refills your HP. So now that we have the candle, we can actually go in here and see what we're doing, which is very important. If you're a speedrunner, you can do this without the lights, and that's great, but I cannot. And these are Octoroks. They spit fireballs at you. They always jump and spit. They don't actually spit when just on the ground, so they're pretty predictable. And doing aerial stabs is a lot tougher than you might think. You kind of have to, like, you don't want to stab when you reach maximum height, usually. You really want to wait until you've slightly dropped in height in order to get up, like, stab two blocks above you. It can be tough. Oh boy, Red Garaya. I should, I, I don't think I mentioned that yet. Enemies come in three different variants. Orange enemies are the easiest, red enemies are tougher, and then blue enemies are the toughest. And we get a special statue. I believe that is called the Artifact. We're going to need that for the next village to get the next magic spell, which is required to go for the game. Don't care about you, Keese. Later! So that'll help us for village number two. Also, if you encounter an enemy on a path, there's no enemy there. You can just quickly move off screen. So that's a nice way if you really don't want to fight an enemy and to make the enemies disappear, just walk onto a path. Oh, fairy, please. Also, Link jumps much, uh, jumps a bit higher when he's running. So in order to actually touch that fairy, you need to get a running jump. Likewise, this cave is also usually dark, so you get the you want to get the candle before coming here. And I'm sure you're watching me, and like if you're, you haven't played this game and you've watched me and are actually now playing it, you're gonna, probably going to be like, Artie, how are you so good at it? Like, I'm terrible with the sword controls. Well, again, that's mostly, that's actually entirely just experience with the game. Once, uh, the more you play, the better you'll get with the controls and the easier time you'll have. You're going to die a lot, that's just the nature of the game, so don't feel discouraged if you're not doing as well as I am. And this is a magic container. Grab it and you get an extra bar of magic. That's very, very nice. 
Attack is always the most expensive thing to level up. So that's why I like leveling up as, it as early as possible. Alright, down this very long path, and we can reach the second village. Town of Rutu. Ruto? I've always pronounced that Rutu. I, that's almost certainly wrong. That's the Water Sage from Ocarina of Time, the really annoying one. Hey, lady. Please, let me help. No, I don't, I don't need any help. Hammer! Wait, oh, she was saying more. Hammer. Spectacle Rock. Death Mountain. <laughs> Death Mountain. This is also, most villages have a lady like this. Stop and rest, rest here. If you go into her house, she'll give you fill up your magic. Not every town has both a healer and a magic healer, but most of them do. Who's in here? Oh yes, one of the most infamous lines in video gaming history. I am Error. His name is Error. That wasn't actually an error in the uh, code. Interesting name. Hey dude, don't run away from me! I want to talk to you, man! Find magic in a cave south of the castle. I did. You saved the trophy. Come in here. Oh yeah, that's the artifact. She actually will not let you inside unless you got the artifact from the cave. And that's generally how you're going to get the magic spells, is you need to find a certain thing, give it to a person, and then they'll let you into their basement where they're hiding an old wizard who can teach you strange powers. Sounds totally legit. With this, you can jump very high. And we learn the jump spell. It takes more magic to use than the shield spell, but it lets you jump much higher. While this doesn't help you a whole lot for combat purposes, you will need to be able to jump high in order to get through a lot of the places in the game. Also, I believe jumping makes you go faster. It at least lets you accelerate more quickly. Oh, hello, lady. How are you doing? Use keys in palaces they are found in. Oh yeah, I think that's actually a new thing. In Zelda 1, if you got a key, you could use it anywhere in any of the dungeons. I believe in Zelda 2, if you get a key, you can only use it in that dungeon. Do not go south without a candle, unless you are a speedrunner. In which case, Feasel is welcome to do what he wants. Hello, young fellow. Uh, hi, lady. Alright, get out of there. Now we're gonna go to the southern part of this hemisphere. So this is a deceptively large cave, despite it not looking very big. Filled with Octorox. Use your shield to deflect the uh, blasts they give. Whoop! Oh. See, even I screw up with the combat. And I hear a Garaya up ahead. Yeah, see? If you can spawn his boomerangs off-screen, that's really nice. Alright, I don't know what these fiends are called, either. They're bugs. Let's take out the bugs. Another red Garaya. So you remember, like, when I found my first heart container, that was an orange Garaya, and he wasn't very hard to defeat. The red one has more HP and is more powerful. Oh, nice! So I'm about to die again. This is worrying me. They keep moving away. Okay. I figured something like that was going to happen. Still have one life, though. Keep in mind, when you have a game over, you lose all of the experience points you have. So really try not to die if you have a lot of experience points, even if you need to backtrack to somewhere safe. This is a red keys. If he flies down, he turns into, like, a bat devil thing. So, like you see here, you can't actually jump up that high, but if you use the jump spell, which takes three bars of magic when it's at level one, you can jump that high. And that is the only way to progress to the end of the cave. Also, if you go into this forest, there's a fairy there that can heal you. These, This is a swamp. It massively hinders your movement. And the enemies here can be annoying. Oh, great. You really don't want to hit the large enemy in this area. The small enemy just has a bunch of stationary Octoroks. This has moving Octoroks and these stupid birds. Okay, I accidentally wandered onto a special square. That is a Link doll. If you pick it up, you get an extra life. 
do not pick those up until you are trying to get to the final dungeon. You're going to need all of those lives to reach the final dungeon. Like, if you accidentally picked up one, you may as well just restart. It's going to be a lot easier. All right. Let's, let's see where this path takes us. Actually, I know where this path takes us. Two roadblocks. There's a cave in there, though. I definitely want to go in there. Oh, these are cats. I don't think that's their official name, but they, let's be honest, they're cats. Alright, I'm going to do something risky. I'm going into this cave. Alright, I gotta lure the cats over here. Ouch. And try very hard not to die. Because I am, again, in that situation where I will lose free... Oh, boy. Oh, no. If you get close enough to him... You can deflect his... You can predict where he's going to throw his boomerangs and then block accordingly, because he'll, like, lower his hand if he's going to throw low and then just have it at normal height if he's going to throw it up higher. Oh, boy. I am playing with so much fire here. I'm going to use... Well, I want to use shield, but if I need to jump in here... Oh, it's a pee bag! Yes! That's exactly what I needed. That is exactly what I needed. That gave me 200 experience points, which lets me get an attack up. How cool is that? So now my attack is at 3, my life is only at 2, and I haven't even upgraded my magic yet. I don't really need to upgrade my magic until I get the third magic spell, because the third magic spell is the most helpful spell in the game. Nope, later. So I know that looked like I was still on the grass, but... The instant you, like, start moving off a tile, it counts like you're on the new tile you're going to move on to. So even though, like, I literally had, like, only for one frame pressed move back onto the path, it said I was on the path in terms of game code. Which, that's pretty cool. Alright. And I think that's all the... Let me... Actually, okay, hang on. Let me just check for a second how much time I've been recording. I have been recording for, like, a half hour now. I think that's a good stopping point. I Ideally, I'd like slightly shorter episodes in uh, Zelda 2. I don't want 40-minute episodes of Zelda 2. I don't think anybody wants 14 episodes of Zelda 2. Most annoying game over screen ever. You're going to get so sick of that by the end of the game. And the reason I do that is because unless you have two controllers plugged in, which I don't, you need to die and have a game over in order to actually save in this game. A bit annoying. If you have two controllers plugged in, when you, uh, you can also save by pressing start on the first controller, and then I believe up and A on the second, and it'll bring you to like this exact screen. I believe. That might not be exactly correct, but basically the way I'm treating this is I can only save if I actually have a game over. So I'm going to aim for kind of 20 to 30 minute episodes for this series, and from now on I'm actually going to have like a set timer in like... Uh, <laughs> I'm going to have a set timer next to me so I can keep track of how long I'm recording to avoid really long episodes like I had for Paper Mario and my past few Let's Plays. Anyways, that's it for the first episode. I hope this has been an informative amount of information for you regarding this game. And if you, keep, if you are interested in this Let's Play, I hope to see you back for episode two. We are probably going to the second palace. We're going to find some hidden stuff in that second little swamp area. And I should hopefully be able to give you some more tips on how to survive this game. It should be... I hope, it, I hope it's very informative for you guys. We'll see you next time. Until then, have a great day, and God bless.